In 1805, two intrepid explorers set out on a journey that would change the course of history. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, along with their team of adventurers, would travel across the uncharted American West, encountering countless dangers along the way. From raging rivers to towering mountains, the core of discovery faced every challenge nature could throw at them. But perhaps the most memorable part of their journey was their encounters with North America's most fearsome predator, the grizzly bear. In this video, we will describe what it was like to come face to face with this animal by using real stories written down by Meriwether Lewis. While you have a moment, I'd like to ask you to subscribe and like this video as it greatly boosts the algorithm and helps grow this channel. Our story begins in 1804 in modern-day North Dakota. In preparation for winter, Lewis and Clark's Corps of Discovery built Fort Mandan, a wood and earth structure intended to defend against Native American raids. It was here where the team first started to hear stories from the natives about what they called white bears. Lewis wrote in his journal, The Indians give a very formidable account of the strength and ferocity of this animal. They never dare to attack but in parties of six, eight or ten men and are even then frequently defeated with the loss of one or more of their party. When the Indians are about to go in search of the white bear, they paint themselves and perform all those superstitious rites commonly observed when they are about to make war upon a neighboring nation. Lewis was less deterred by the warnings than one would expect, and originally wrote that he believed that grizzlies would be no problem for a skilled European hunter with modern skills and equipment. After his journey, however, he went back to this note and wrote about how wrong he was. The first direct encounter with a bear from a member of Lewis and Clark's party happened on October 20th, 1804 at Fort Mandan. Lewis provides a detailed report of the encounter in his journal. Peter Crusat that day shot at a white bear and wounded him. But being alarmed at the formidable appearance of the bear, he ran, leaving his tomahawk and gun. October 20th simply wasn't Peter Crusat's day. Soon after running from the bear, he shot a buffalo cow and again found himself being chased by a wild animal. This time he was forced to hide in a small ravine until the cow walked off. For those of you who know a lot about Peter Crusat, this is the same man who accidentally shot Meriwether Lewis in the buttocks later in the journey. Maybe if this video gets 100 likes, we'll make a video about the misadventures of Peter Crusat because that's its own amazing story. It was seven months until the Corps had another encounter with a bear, likely due to their hibernation period. On the 5th of May, 1805, two hunters shot and killed the first grizzly. Captain Clark and Captain Drewyer killed a brown bear this evening, which was the largest we have yet seen. It was a most tremendous looking animal and extremely hard to kill, withstanding five balls through his lungs and five others in various parts. After being shot, he swam more than half the distance across the river to a sandbar, and it was at least 20 minutes before he died. The next day, Lewis wrote his revised opinions on the predators, this time with a newfound respect for their toughness. He wrote about how many men in his party were eager to shoot a bear and how he expected this eagerness to disappear the first time they saw one alive. Six days later, one of these eager men, William Bratton, found himself face to face with a bear while out on a hunt. With expert precision, he landed a shot that should have been a killing blow, a shot that pierced both lungs. However, this wouldn't be enough to bring down this grizzly. The bear chased him on the riverbank for nearly a mile before it gave up. Lewis and some others tracked the bear's blood and upon discovering the animal remarked that he would rather fight two Indians bare-handed than a grizzly bear with a rifle. One of the most harrowing of these early encounters came on May 15, 1805 in what now is Missouri. Lewis wrote, Six good hunters of the party fired at a white bear several times before they killed him and he had it in him to defeat the whole party. As the men fired on him, he pursued them separately and was near catching several of them. He pursued two of them separately so close that they were obliged to throw aside their guns and leap into the river. So enraged was this animal that he plunged into the river only a few feet behind the second man. Right before he caught the man, one of those who still remained on shore shot him through the head and finally killed him. 
The group continued to have semi-frequent encounters with grizzly bears as they made their journey. Meriwether Lewis even had his own frightful experience with a bear while out exploring alone. Lewis had just shot a buffalo he planned on eating when a grizzly appeared in the brush less than 30 yards away. Lewis raised his gun to fire, but realized he hadn't reloaded yet after taking down the buffalo. His only option was to run into the river and draw his knife, which served as enough of a deterrent for the bear. After this encounter, the Corps recommended against men alone into the wilderness, fearing that someone would be attacked and killed. On July 15, 1806, the Corps had their most frightful and likely their most famous encounter with brown bears. Despite warnings about traveling alone, Private Hugh McNeil left the group to check on a cache of supplies they had stashed a small distance away from the main camp. A little before dark, McNeil returned with his musket broken off at the breach and informed me that on his arrival at the cache, a bear came out of the brush not ten feet away from him. The horse took off in alarm and threw off his rider. The bear raised himself on his hind feet for battle and gave McNeil time to recover from his fall. He did so in an instant, and with his musket he clubbed the bear over the head, which broke in half. Stunned, the bear fell to the ground and began to scratch his head with his feet. This gave McNeil time to scramble up a willow tree that was nearby. The bear waited at the foot of the tree until late in the evening when he left him. Lewis and Clark's encounters with grizzly bears represent a fascinating and crucial aspect of their historic expedition across the American West. Some may view bears as another obstacle to overcome in their journey, but I say it was more than that. You can see at least in Lewis's journals that he learned a great respect for these tough animals and was awestruck by them. What is your favorite fact or section of Lewis and Clark's journey? Leave your answers below in the comments. If you enjoyed this story, we would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribed. Thanks for watching and we hope you click back soon.